Okay, hi there folks. Um, at the end of the last film I did, I did tell you that I would record something about nutrition in regards to fibro. And um, in the last few days I felt that it would be missing a link if I went straight from the supplements that I talked about last week, i.e. the magnesium, malate, vitamin D, gelatin and collagen. Not so much supplements at the end there, but dietary elements. I felt I'd be missing a link um, for you if I went straight into nutrition. So I hope by the end that you'll see why I'm recording this um, and rather than the nutrition that I promised last week. So we're carrying on with pain relief. So at the end of the last film, I also said that the pains had eased on the back of taking those four things that I had just mentioned. And so that by the beginning of 2018, I was ready for life overhaul. Well, why, you might have asked yourself, and I'm asking myself, you know, what's the answer to that question? And I know what the answer is, but you might be thinking, well, what's that got to do with anything if you've found something that's working for you? And the reason why I did want to have um, some overhaul going on in my life is because, as I mentioned, my diet wasn't the best. Um, whilst I have no objection to vegetables, I actually really, really like them and fruit. They weren't heavy players in my diet. Also, I mentioned that I have a history of sleeplessness and I was taking the antihistamines. So I wanted to find a way of coming off antihistamines so I could sleep more naturally. And I also knew I needed to change my diet. So, I think it was around the 11th of January, it was really early on into the new year in 2018, I started getting fruit and um, veg boxes delivered. So a local greengrocer who would just do these surprise boxes, I really kind of wouldn't know what was coming. There were things that I could say I didn't want, so I don't like bananas, um, so those wouldn't come. And so I started to eat more fruit and veg. I think on one particular occasion I got um, aubergine, which I would have said, don't like that, but I had it, started to use it, so I made a ratatouille. So my diet started to improve, and um, I also started making my own bread using organic yeast, which is a real pain to actually try and locate, and where I could get it, using organic flours as well. The reason for this is my brother had had a long conversation with me about the perils of modern wheat, um, which I might go into in, in more nutrition-based um, films, I, I hope to. So I started making my own bread. And at the time I would have said bread was my favourite food. I would have it for breakfast, lunch and dinner and any snacks in between. And um, so on, for a couple of reasons I wanted life overhaul, improved diet, get off antihistamines and sleep more naturally. What I found, however, as 2018 progressed was that the career redirection that I'd made, whilst it was great because I wasn't in front of lots of people, wasn't so great because for hours I was just sat, um, hunched over a computer, um, toilet very close to where I sat, kitchen very close to where I sat, so not much movement going on, lots of repetitive tasks, lots of wrist work. Um, in addition to that, as I mentioned last week, I think the week before, I'd moved home. So there was lots of DIY to be done inside the house and garden work to be done in the garden. And whilst I was driving a lot less than I had been in my previous job, I was still driving. Couldn't, I can't get to work without having my car. And um, half an hour for lunch meant that I wasn't getting as much walking in and as I've said everything was very close to where my desk is. Also the office is notoriously cold, even people who don't feel the cold, and I always feel the cold, um, would have to bulk up their layers of clothing. One chap, he keeps um, an emergency jumper in his desk because that's the kind of environment we work in, and obviously not at the moment with lockdown. So. 2018, I'm beginning to experience um, widespread pain, more so than I had in 2016, 2017. So the pain is now my wrists, my fingers, my knees, my neck, my shoulders. 
I'm actually sleeping worse despite the antihistamines. And by December 2018, I'm using a wrist brace and having to use a hot water bottle all the time to press against my back and my hips where there's also pain. So throughout the year, I've been dabbling with, with other things to try to compensate for um, the increased levels of pain that I'm experiencing. So I took the Solgar 7 supplement. Um, I changed to marine collagen rather than the hydrolyzed beef collagen. And as soon as it started to get darker, I was taking vitamin D from um, over the counter rather than from the, the GP. I even had a session of reflexology. Nothing really was working for me. Things were in fact getting worse. So 2019 arrives. And whereas 2017 had been the most difficult year of my life, 2018, I felt, was the year I worked hardest. And it seemed as though those supplements and, and food elements that were working for me in 2017 weren't able to help me um, live my life as a single woman with a house, um, a household to run, um, to do the jobs around the house and around the garden that I had to do. Couldn't pay someone to do all of those jobs that I've just mentioned, I don't earn at that level. So I knew something was, you know, outside of the scope of my um, ability to buy on the internet or, you know, in my local pharmacy. Things um, were degenerating rather than improving. I'm looking down because once again I've made notes to myself. So I look back now and 2019 was a year of pain and so I'm now at the point in 2019 where it's painful just to sit on the loo, um, lying in bed, um, it's just painful and pain in really weird places like my elbow, I mean <laughs> um, the ball of my foot my fingertips and the tips of my feet, my toes, sorry. Um, and everything exhausted me. Just doing the things that I needed to do to live and to work exhausted me. I was struggling to keep up with my chores, cleaning, food prep. It felt like I couldn't do my life. That the level of pain I was experiencing, or perhaps I was experiencing the pain because I was working, but I've always worked. Um, something was just very wrong um, and I couldn't find a way myself to make improvements and I couldn't, like, you can't just stop living, can you? Now, just as a sort of a segue from that, I have seen a couple of things from people, mainly on the NHS website, where they're talking about their experience of fibro and it almost seems like a sort of a, a cloud of pain um, they, the NHS used in a couple of these videos some sort of um, special effects and it was like um, waves and colours and what have you and, and if that's how your experience of fibro pain is then um, that I'm glad that there is a way that it can be described. I cannot join that chorus because that's not how I experience fibro. For me fibro pain can always be pointed to. I can point to it in numerous places across my body and say there's that crashing pain or tingling pain or nerve pain or throbbing pain or hot pain or whatever it is. I can always point to it. It never, never feels like a cloud. What feels like a cloud perhaps is just the sheer exhaustion. By 2019 I'm also taking time off work regularly because I I'm having sleepless nights where I'm just racked with pain and I'm just exhausted come the next day and I can't do a full day's work. And so by summer 2019, I hit a low. And um, I mentioned in the first film I, I did about my fibro that there's, um, still exists, I haven't used it for a while, a healthcare scheme through my employer. And I scoured the fine print to see what was there that I could maybe use to just get in front of a specialist to just find out what the heck I can do. And I did find an allowance of £200 to have a private cons consultation um, in, in a clinic or a hospital. 
and um, in the meantime my GP had referred me to rheumatology but the poor NHS, um, brave heroic NHS but poor NHS, just so many resources, uh, so few resources for how many people are pulling at those resources. The appointment wasn't for like the end of the year and I requested this in sort of May, June time but with private healthcare at least there are sh much shorter wait times. I got to see a doctor, a specialist in the July. I won't go into it too much but he did all the, the tests and, and he said yes I would say almost certainly that you've got fibro. He wrote to my GP and recommended that I put be put on something called amitriptyline. That has been the pain relief that I've now been on for, well, July 2019 I was put on it. So I saw him and within 10 days, I think it was, of that referral, I was able to speak to my own GP, my, my village, and then get put on to this drug. Now I'll link to um, the arthritis site that describes what amitriptyline is, it's actually a drug for um, depression when taken at high doses. I was put on 10 milligrams a day. The consultant looked at me in the room and he said, you'll like this Lydia because um, it'll help you sleep. And I was like, oh my God, give it to me now. Um, and it did by the way. So I was put on a low dosage, 10 mils. And um, because I've got low blood pressure and a couple of other things, which I won't go into here, the my GP decided to monitor me, so he called me back in after 10 days or two weeks, something like that. When I went back in the first time, having been on the amitriptyline for about 10 days, two weeks, my blood pressure, which is always low anyway, was just dangerously low. I hadn't felt any impact of it, but immediately they took me off the amitriptyline, called me back in 10 or so days later, my and blood pressure had gone back up again, so they're like, it's almost doubtless that this is actually being caused by the drug and we don't want to put you back on it. And I was, within within a few days of being on amitriptyline, the pain in my knees, elbows, neck and shoulders, um, and some of the pain in my back and my hip was almost entirely gone. And I said, look, this thing is helping me and it was helping me to sleep. So we had some toing and froing. In the end, it was decided that I would go on to it, but still keep coming back to the surgery to have my blood pressure and other aspects of my health monitored. And as a, as a payoff with that, I would have to make sure I drank at least two litres of water every day to keep my blood pressure up. So I'm still on it. The decision was made that I would remain on it. And... Um, I, I say that, yeah, it, it really did have a, a wonderful impact on me, but it's not the goose that laid the golden egg and I still have pain occasionally. I hear people with fibro say there's good days and bad days. I would say it's good weeks and bad weeks because I've had some bad weeks even this year, 2020. Um, I won't go into it now because I want this, um, this film to draw to a close quite soon, but I would say amitriptyline has been a really good drug for me to go on to maintain um, a much better level of pain control. Um, it hasn't, as I said, got rid of all of my pain. I don't want to have to take higher and higher doses or become potentially addicted to it. And um, I do believe in self-help and I want to know why I've got this condition, what, what has triggered it. And partly why I'm doing these films is because I'm hoping other people with fibro will watch this and I'll watch other people's videos and try and find a common denominator. Um, what was it that's triggered this response? Is it an immune response? Is it an inflammation? Um, is, was it triggered by inflammation levels? Um, was it because we've been exposed to chemicals or plastics or EMFs? Is it a dietary triggered thing? I want to get to the bottom of it so I can treat the root. So whilst at the moment amitriptyline is my pain control and it's really helpful and I've seen amazing things happen since being on it, I don't want to be on drugs for the rest of my life. I bet you don't want to either whether you're on something, whether you're on amitriptyline or you're faced with the idea of being on a drug for the rest of your life. So I'm doing lots of research 
Um, I'll reveal that to you slowly over the weeks rather than bombarding you with everything that I've discovered. Um, next week I really do think that I want to um, talk to you about nutrition because I found that also really rather helpful. So again, we're nearing the 15 minute mark. You don't need to hear me ramble on for more than that. So take care. God bless you. Speak to you soon.